Hi, my name is Leah Branch, and welcome to my very first issue of My Senior Capstone. In this issue, you are going to learn and hopefully take away three key components. Those components are style, comfort, and second chances. Like many of us seniors, I had a hard time trying to decide what to do my capstone on. I ended up going back and forth between ideas, which ultimately led to me changing my original capstone idea completely. I finally decided to go into this field of design that I really enjoyed, which is the ever-growing world of shoes. But instead of coming up with some sick design for the next sneakerhead to take off the market and hoard away in their closet, never to see the light of day, <laughs> my younger sister, I decided to focus on an audience that often isn't recognized enough. That audience is the amputee community. And, with, and that is when I thought of the idea of creating a shoe for prosthetic feet. Before I get into things, I'll go over the table of contents. I will start with the intro, my research, the why, go into the testing, and then finally end with the conclusion. So a quick glimpse of who I am and my family. We love getting together and growing up each and every Friday, we would have family night, which normally consisted of us watching movies together. I remember my siblings and I going to the blockbuster and finding over which movie to watch that night. We still carry on this tradition today, minus the blockbuster part. We are a movie family, and I've watched a lot of sci-fi films and shows growing up. These are just a few of my favorite films and shows. As you can see, I love everything with high-tech robots, spaceships, and futuristic scenes. Once I discovered that in real life, there are actually people who use metal parts to move around, I just about lost my mind. I've always had this fascination with how technology could be used in ways to give people their functions back, which is where my interest in prosthetic design started. For the part for the research part of my of my capstone, I wanted to show exactly what an amputation was and what it consisted of. And that is an amputation is any loss of limb due to trauma, illness, or surgery. I then wanted to ask these four major questions. How many amputees in the US are there? What are the causes of amputations? Are there shoes specifically designed with amputees in mind? And is there a struggle with changing shoes? So firstly, I start with the statistics of it all. I found that in the US, there are nearly 2 million people living with some type of limb loss. This could be due to an accident, an injury, an illness, or maybe they're even born with a limb difference. I also discovered that approximately 185,000 people have an amputation each year, meaning that 300 to 500 amputations are performed every day. And this number is expected to increase by the year 2050, this is due to the increasing rates of diabetes as well as other vascular diseases. I then discovered that with these amputations, above and under the knee are the most common for people to receive. I also put my research towards footwear and what was available. My search was quick as I soon found that there is a huge disconnect in the footwear industry that often excludes the amputee community. It was based off my research that I was led to focus on the lower limb amputees as well as their footwear. So why should you care? You don't have to have lost a limb in order to care about someone that has. Those who have lost a limb are still incredible people like you and I. One, losing a limb is life-changing. Many face challenges as they, they have to learn how to do everything over again, such as walking. Two, innovation is the future. It's no secret that with technology advances, there will be new and improved ways of doing things. Prosthetics is the most, is, prosthetics is most definitely in that future. And three, everyone should be able to feel confident and comfortable. Not only is losing a limb life altering, but it can be uncomfortable, especially in the beginning. When you feel, when you feel comfortable, your confidence grows. And that is what's vital in a patient's rehabilitation process. For interviews, I had the opportunity to talk with professionals in the field. I learned a lot, such as these key terms. Residual limb, which is also known as a stump, the sound limb, which is the unaffected limb, and other terms like socket, sleeve, and liner. I also learned the process of how someone is fitted for their prosthetic in general. It was after talking with them that I decided to put all of my focus of my design of the shoe on an older audience. Based on our conversations, they have the hardest time adjusting their shoe, especially when it comes to bending down. It's also important to think about the components of the shoe to help them get it on and off. Remember, a prosthetic foot does not have the flexibility nor the dexterity that allows them to move and shift their foot in. It is a straight shot, which requires a sturdy heel collar and a wide opening. 
Now, this was probably one of my favorite parts I researched on. As you all know, technology changes often and with the advances in today and many to come in the future, there's no stopping this momentum. From my many interviews, I found that each prosthetic is unique to their user, and that depends on their activity level, which determines what type of prosthetic they will receive. This is a system called the K-level performance level. It is with this that a person is able to receive the prosthetic that is right for them. So K1 is your most basic level. K2 is limited community, which basically means how does someone navigate a crowd? Will they walk a straight path or will they cut, pivot, and turn sharply? K3 is variable cadence. And lastly, K4, which, are, which is a super active level, also known as for the athletes. So the why. I will address some pain points, the OG shoe, the market, competitive sets, introduce you to my user personas, and discuss the sound foot. So first, the OG shoes. Now, I'm sure most of you have seen the shoe at least once in your lifetime whether that was on the nice lady who likes to power walk through the mall or somewhere in a hipster store, since apparently they're trending in street fashion now. Despite what you've seen or what you've heard, this is a relatively good shoe. It has all the basic necessities. It's got Velcro, a big toe box, lots of room for circulation. It's sturdy, and most importantly, it's comfortable. Keeping this in mind, I had to think of some of the pain points that most users with prosthetic feet have. I also had to think of important elements such as protection. Next, I wanna address the competitive sets. The closest that I did find that seemed to be making the most headway were these three shoes. One, the Nike Flight Ease. This shoe is incredible. You literally stick your foot in and it snaps to your foot. The only problem with this shoe is that once it was released to the market, it was quickly bought up by sneakerheads, which then jacked up the price exponentially. Essentially, no, no one who really needed this shoe got it, the opportunity to even get it. Second, the Under Armour HOVR shoe. This is more of a trail slash running shoe, but I wanted to focus on the lace mechanism with this shoe. As you can see, the laces are inside of it and they're activated by this tab right here. All you have to do is pull the strap back and the shoe tightens. And lastly, three, the Kizik Athens. This shoe is relatively new to the market. It's known for their crushable heel, which allows the user to put on the shoe and take it off without bending down. Now, meet my two user personas, Ezra and Ida. Both are amputees. Ezra enjoys surfing, and some of his frustrations are walking in the sand, deadlines, and protecting a sound foot. Ida is a, lives in Chicago, Illinois, and is always ready to try new things. She loves reading and she loves stylish sneakers. However, some of her frustrations are not being able to find good shoes, managing her diabetes, and long meetings. Keeping this in mind, I was able to add their concerns and frustrations as well as their goals to the design of my shoe. Next, the sound foot and why protecting it matters. Based on my interviews with professionals, most amputations are in patients with some type of vascular disease. I know everyone's familiar with diabetes being a very serious disease if not treated with care and urgency. A typical part of having diabetes that physical therapists have seen many times in their sessions are patients with foot ulcers. I remember speaking with one physical therapist and she told me she will have patients that will come in with a nearly purple looking foot. In other words, that foot would soon have to be amputated. More than 80% of amputations begin with foot ulcers. A non-healing foot ulcer causes severe damage to the tissue and bone, which requires surgical removal. It starts off with a toe and then a foot, and unfortunately, eventually a part of a leg. And over time, if this ulcer is not taken care of, it can spread even further throughout the body. Things that cause foot ulcers are stubbing the toe, walking around barefoot, accidentally cutting a foot while cutting a toenail, and tight shoes, so poor circulation. This is why protecting the sound foot is vital at is the, at is, at, as it is the only residual limb a patient has left, and protecting that is important. This is just another factor that I had to think about when designing my shoe. So now the testing. So I had to do a, a foot study and sorry to everyone who does not like feet, but it had to be done. During my ideation, I was encouraged to understand the mechanics of the foot. And in order to understand how an artificial limb works, I had to understand how the real limb works. I was able to understand just how much goes into the foot and how it's able to do what it does. I also did a couple of ideations over here, trying to get inspiration from different things. 
and trying to figure out how the upper should look like as well as how the sole should look too. Now onto my inspiration. I needed to gather some sort of ins inspiring image in my mind to help me come up with the upper design of my shoe. I wanted to somehow emphasize the theme of second chances. And so after doing some digging, I found that the phoenix is a great symbol for this. In Greek mythology and ancient Egypt, the phoenix represents rebirth and a second chance, which is exactly the theme I wanted to show throughout the design of my shoe. I also decided to go with the brand Adidas. I wanted to incorporate something with the phoenix wings and even add that within the Adidas logo. So just trying new things and seeing what I can come up with through my ideation process. Next is my hands-on research. I had the opportunity to go to Optimus Prosthetics in the area, which is a physical therapy facility dedicated to amputees. I remember speaking with one of the physical therapists, Andrea, and she told me getting on a shoe and switching it out on a prosthetic foot is like fighting a crocodile. It was very difficult. She literally had to turn the prosthetic leg upside down and had to jam the shoe onto the foot. It was very hard. As you can see up here, here is a Nike Air Force One next to an orthopedic shoe. Surprisingly, the Nike Air Force One shoe was a lot easier to get on than all of the other shoes that they had. This was because it had a very sturdy heel, club, heel cover as well as a wide opening for the foot to go into. I had to write all this down just to get some ideas. And finally, the conclusion. I'll talk about my renders, components of the shoe, the overview, and my project takeaway. But first, I'd like to address a little bit of my classmates' mischievous activities. So now onto the renders. Let me point out some key features. The Adidas logo hidden within the Phoenix wings off to the side, the shoelace tightener in the back, Supportive and durable heel step to pop off with ease. As for the sole, I wanted to create my own logo for what Adidas could use with the Phoenix inspired look. If you look at the tread pattern, I did research on what good slip resistant shoes look like. Part of building a patient's confidence is allowing them to feel stable on wet and uneven surfaces. This treading pattern allows for water to pass through with each step, preventing water from being trapped inside of the shoe, which causes you to hydroplane. I also want to point your attention to the design in the tread over here. And I want you to take a moment and look at your thumb. Do you notice how your thumb is different from that of someone else's thumb? Everyone has a unique thumbprint pattern that is for them. With this in mind, I wanted to add that in my sole design because just like a fingerprint, each prosthetic is fitted uniquely to that of a person. And I wanted to pay homage to that. Here's a more in-depth uh, close-up of my shoe. As you can see, I went to the sides open up, resembling the spreading wings of a phoenix. And all the person has to do is open up the shoe, put their foot in, and then pull this tab and the shoe tightens, preventing them from bending down or messing with laces. I also decided to add a funky design magazine cover as well as some potential colorways. And here is a Procreate rendering. And here is a rendering and gravity sketch that I just, that I came up with. Now, meeting the needs. Remember those three key components, style, comfort, and a second chance? Well, that was all done through these elements, a pole lace system, a heel step, padded interior, and keeping a classic style. Takeaway, what did I learn? One thing I learned from this project was time management and managing my time well. Second thing was putting myself in client's shoes. I had to be able to understand just a little bit of what they went through in order, enough, in order to understand how I can help them through the design of my shoe. I also learned a lot of new things and I also failed at a lot of things. I quickly found that it's okay to fail and that with failure, you learn what to do better. Next I learned is that you should have fun definitely in the research project. Taking breaks is great. Fellowship with my peers. 
I think the most important part of this project was just being able to talk with my classmates as well as work together and even take breaks with them. It was very much needed. And lastly, after this whole entire project, as we come to an end of the semester, I realized something. I am an industrial designer. And that is something that is very exciting. Thank you.